Hi everyone, welcome back to Average Fitness, fitness hints and tips for the average person. Today's video is around a 25 to 30 minute mobility and flexibility routine that I put together for a client of mine who is looking to start lifting weights, heavy weights, on a more consistent basis. And I thought that a lot of other people can find value from this, so I thought I would record it not just for that client, but actually for everybody to see, okay? Now, this particular routine is very, very adaptable. Like I say, it's around 25 to 30 minutes, However, you can pick out your favorites. You know, we're gonna do about 12 to 15 different exercises here. You could pick out your favorite four or five and use those as part of your warm up for whatever workout you're gonna be doing that day. So you can, you can chop and change this. You can add some bits in that you found useful in the past. It's a very adaptable workout, okay? But if you are gonna be working out with me, it does cover your full body. So we're gonna start with our shoulders. We're gonna do our hips and our ankles as well. And that's gonna help with things like squat, flexibility and form, things that are gonna be you know, great for your deadlift and everything else as well, okay? So, as I said, if you are gonna join in with me, by all means get yourself ready, make sure you've got some space, and we'll go from there. All right, so you're not gonna need any special equipment for this routine, this, uh, this workout. All you're gonna need is a couple of things. A little bit of space. As you can see, I'm using a yoga mat. You don't have to. Uh, the only reason I'm using it is because I have one available, and I'd rather not use the, the wooden floor and the laminate floor, and so if you're uh, doing this routine on a rug or on carpet, you should be absolutely fine. You don't need a yoga mat to go down as well. It's just to help you know, with your knees and that kind of thing on the, on the solid floor. Um, the other things you're gonna need is something like either a very light resistance band, um, or what I prefer to use is something like this. This is a little mop that we've got. You could use a broomstick or basically any long item that isn't very heavy. That's really, really important. It needs to be super light, okay? So make sure you've got something like that available. If you don't have anything and you don't have a resistance band, you're just gonna have to do the best you can. Um, what I'd probably recommend is using something like a towel, which you can then roll up into, into something that's quite slim, you know, and but quite a long towel. So we're gonna be using something like that a little bit later on. And the last thing that you'll need is uh, a tea towel or something similar um, for one of the exercises that we do. And also not forgetting some water. This is a much lighter, much slower paced workout than what we're probably used to. Um, and it's gonna help with you know, recovery and mobility to, to help with your heavier lifts and your more intense workouts going forward. But make no mistake, even though it's a little bit slower paced and even though we're taking it easy, uh, it is still gonna raise our heart rate. And if it's particularly warm where you are like it is here, you are gonna need some water uh, to one side. So make sure you're all good to go. Make sure you have a little bit of space around you and those items that we, uh, we talked about and we'll get cracking. So I've tried to stagger this routine, this workout um, in, in, a, in an order that makes sense. So starting from the top and working down, starting with our shoulders and whatnot, and working all the way down to our ankles. Um, we're going to, there's gonna be a little bit of up and down, so we're not gonna do all the standing bits first, now we're seated and laying bits later. We're gonna mix it up a little bit, um, but like I say, I've staggered it and hopefully it makes a little bit of sense to you. So I've got my little list here on one side, so uh, don't be alarmed if you see me kind of shooting off to, uh, to refer to my list, because I wanna get this right, and, uh, and hopefully this will provide some value going forward. All right, so we're gonna start with some walkout burpees. We've done these before, I'm sure you know what they are, but basically you're gonna stand with some space out in front of you, you're gonna reach up as high as you can, on your tiptoes, couple of seconds, and then you're gonna come down and walk your hands out into a press up slash plank starting position. Then you're gonna walk back in, all the way to your toes, and repeat for a few reps. Hopefully wherever you are, you have a higher ceiling than what I have, because just here I've got almost no room to stretch. But that's okay. Doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to work with what you've got. Couple more reps. And this is obviously working our shoulders, but also engaging our core as well. Walk it back in for the last time and shake it off a little bit. Okay, what have we got next? Next we've got an exercise called around the world, or at least that's what I've named it. So, feet slightly wider than hip width apart. You're gonna put your hands together or whatever you like, keep them, keep them together. And then you're gonna go down and around in a full range of motion all the way around. Make sure to bend your knees as you go down. All the way around in a good stretch. Nice and slow, nice and steady. One more up this way. Take a little breather, and then go back the other way. So circling your hips, and obviously stretching your core as well, stretching your arms up. This is where that heart rate starts to rise. 
Things get a little bit sweaty. One more. And shake it off a little bit. Ooh, fantastic. All right. Once again, same starting position, feet slightly wider than hip width apart, and you're going to bend the, the waist, you're going to bend sideways, so not bending forwards or backwards, just sideways, left and right, nice and easy. A couple more reps on each side, nice and slow and controlled. Last one. And shake it off a little bit. Well done. Okay, so now we're going to get whichever piece of apparatus you've selected for this exercise. Okay, I've called the exercise broomstick because that's what would be perfect for this. So, like I say, as long as the egg you're using is very, very light, it should be absolutely fine. If it's a towel rolled up or a broomstick or a mop or whatever you've got, no problem. What you're going to do is place your hands quite wide apart. So, in my case, I'm having to use the full length of this thing. And you're going to start standing position, bring your hands up over your head and then stretch as far back as you can, okay? And you're gonna come down. Do that a couple of times, and you'll find the more you do it, the further you can stretch. You might get to the stage, maybe not, but you might get to the stage where you can come all the way around. All right, and you'll feel the, uh, the tension release off your, your, your chest muscles there as you come down. And do that a few more times. So stretch there you'll feel it stretching across your chest and then you'll feel it release if you do come behind your head like, like i've just done a couple more times yeah, i'm getting out of breath already it's all this talking i'm doing <laughs> one more so don't worry if you can't go this far that's absolutely fine that's what these exercises are for to improve your mobility all right so don't worry if you can't do that just yet give your uh, your arms a little bit of a shake Pop whatever you've been using to one side and then just give it a few of these just to loosen those chest muscles up a little bit. Maybe a couple around like this as well. Fantastic, all right, shake it off a little bit. Now, the next one, we're gonna be using that smaller tea towel, for example, or, or uh, resistance band or whatever you're using. And I'm gonna spin around for this, but I'm just gonna explain it first. Basically, you're gonna get your, whatever you're using, you're gonna lengthen it like this and you're gonna hold it behind your head. Okay, so imagine you're doing a, a tricep extension exercise you're going to hold it behind your head and then with your other arm you're going to reach up and you're going to pull down very slightly okay so the stretch should be in the arm that is alongside your ear the one that's uh, bent at your elbow alongside your ear and you're going to pull with your other arm so in my case i'm pulling with my left and that is stretching the right relax a couple of seconds and then again and relax and again fantastic and then you're simply going to switch arms so in my case left arm behind my head right arm up behind and then squeeze hold it for a few seconds and relax and then squeeze a couple more seconds and relax and one more time, squeeze and relax. Okay, well done. So, shake it off a little bit, roll your wrists a little bit, just loosen up. At any point throughout this exercise, by all means, throughout this workout, excuse me, by all means, stop, take a quick sip, pause the video if you have to, and don't be scared to, to do some other movements that I'm not doing. You know, some of these, if you want to give it a few of these or or a few of these or whatever it is just to loosen up as you're going if you feel tightness in a particular area then by all means shake it up a little bit or pause the video and spend longer in that particular stretch or spend longer next time or whatever you want to do very very flexible um approach to this workout okay now the next one we're going to do i'm just going to scoop this back a little bit the next one we're going to do there is an official name for this uh, this exercise but i've no idea what it is or i've completely forgotten what it is rather so you're going to come down to your hands and knees you do a what they call a tabletop position. So your hands are directly under your shoulders, your knees are directly under your hips. I'm just gonna scooch forward a tiny bit. And from this position, you're gonna bring your left arm forward and your right leg back, okay? So you're balancing on the left leg and right hand, okay? And then you're gonna squeeze in and back out again. And you're gonna do that half a dozen times. 
Split second pause in between. One more. And back to your starting position. And then you've guessed it, swap arms, swap legs. Last one. All right, fantastic. Woo. And finally, before we take a tiny little break, we're going to move into child's pose. Okay? Now, child's pose is a yoga, a yoga phrase. And basically, what it means is you're going to have a little bit of space out in front of you, have your feet together under your backside, but your knees wider apart. And then you're going to stretch forward, place the uh, the top of your feet down on the floor like that behind you, and then you're going to sit back. And this stretch is great for your lower back. Obviously, depending on how flexible you already are, will depend on how far down you can come. But basically, go as far down as you can before you feel any discomfort, and then relax. Now, from there, we're not going to keep it too relaxing. You're going to take your left arm, and you're going to slide it under your body just here. Turn your head, and then bring your right arm up behind you. And then back down. Back into standard child's pose and then swap arms. So your right arm comes through, turn your head and your left arm comes up and then back to the starter position. By all means if you want to pause the video here and spend a little bit longer in this pose then now is the time to do so but if not you're going to come back up nice and gently, nice and slowly back to your feet. And you're going to shake it off a little bit We'll take a quick break. I'm going to grab, grab a little bit of water. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, the next phase of this workout is going to be focused more on our hips and the lower body. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our hip flexors a little bit. This is going to help for, in particular, mobility for your squats and any leg exercise really, but really going to help with your squats. Maybe use a wall or something to lean against just to, uh, to get your balance. And it sounds very simple, but it's a little bit more difficult than it looks. What you're going to do is bounce on one leg, and your other leg, you're going to bring your knee up as high as you can, okay? And then back down, nice and controlled. However, what you don't want to do is let your leg deviate from a straight up and down path. So really focus on getting that leg as high up as you can, but in a perfectly straight line. So nice and slow and controlled. We're going to do a good few of these. So we've done five so far. Nice and slow. Bring that knee up as high as you can. Couple more. And back down. And then you're obviously going to switch legs. So take a second, get your balance, and then up as high as you can. And really focus on the form, keeping that leg perfectly straight all the way through. Not a difficult exercise by any stretch, but one that you will get a lot of benefit from if you do concentrate on keeping your form correct. Halfway through. Two more. Really bring that knee up as high as you can. Last one, squeeze and down. Now, just a quick interlude here to show you that if you wanted to vary that exercise a little bit, you can use some resistance bands as long as you've obviously got them and as long as they are very, very light, okay? And you would do that lying down. So same exact principle. You put the uh, resistance bands around your feet here. You lie nice and flat and then just focus on keeping the leg in a straight path all the way up and down, okay? And obviously the resistance band itself will add some tension, will add some, you know, resistance, uh, Whereas doing it standing, it's all gravity who's adding the resistance. So yeah, a little bit of a deviation there if you prefer, okay? Now, next exercise is going to be a single leg glute bridge. So what you're going to do is you're going to sit yourself down. And as you probably guessed it, you're going to bring one leg off the floor. And you're, say for example, if you're starting with your left leg, you're going to have your left heel on the floor, okay? And you're going to press up and down. And up and down. So not a great range of motion here, just a slight movement, but definitely works 
very, very quickly. We'll do eight all together. So that's seven and eight. And then you've guessed it, swap legs. So in my case, we're going with the right now. Again, try and control your movement so that you're simply going up and down on a straight path. You're not falling all over the shop. And that's it. Well done. Okay, let me just refer to my list here and see what's next. So, single leg group bridge, and then we're going into some hip rotations. So, internal hip rotations to be precise. There's a few different ones we're going to do here, okay? So, I'll run through them as we go. Um, they're very, very straightforward, okay? So, the first one we're going to do is actually going to be sitting down, all right? But what I like to do, especially when you're a beginner, is start with your hands behind your support knee here, okay? Basically, what you're going to do is from this position, you're going to rotate your right hip inward and your left hip outwards. So, you come to this position, all right? So, your legs are both at a 90 degree angle. And then, nice and slowly back over the other way. Dead, dead easy, okay? Do a couple of those. So you're basically rotating as far as you can. All the way over. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. One more each side. All right, so nice and easy. I'm sure you found that nice and easy. Next one we're going to do, same thing, except we're going to keep our hips fairly stationary, so facing fairly forward. And that basically means just rotating the, the inward leg in rather than rotating the other leg out as well. Okay, so one at a time this time. Okay, see the difference there? Again, I'm using my hands to support and you can definitely do so. Obviously, once you become more advanced, you might not need to do that and that's absolutely fine. All right, but nice and slow and controlled in and out. all over the place on this floor. One more. There we are. Okay. Fantastic. What's next? So we've got the, okay, so before we move on, we're going to do a couple more of those, but this time we're going to do them in a kind of a squat position. All right. So get your feet maybe slightly wider than hip width apart, maybe with your toes pointing slightly out. And I do mean slightly. Okay. You're going to come down and do a deep squat and you're just going to internally rotate one leg and then the other. All right. Nice and easy. Okay, this is obviously going to be a lot more difficult because we're in a squat position, so we're only going to do a few. Come back up, step it out a little bit, shake it off a little bit, give your hips a kind of a, a rotate, and then we're going to go back and do a few more. Okay, so starting in the same position, down nice and gently to 90 degrees, internal rotation, split second each way, one more each side, and back up, and again, step it out a little bit, Shake it off a little bit to grab a little swig of water if you need to. All right, moving on down to our angles, okay? The next exercise we're gonna do is very straightforward. You need a wall to press against, or ideally, I suppose, you need a wall. And basically, all you're gonna be doing is taking a step forward without actually leaving, without, excuse me, your heel coming off the floor. So, basically, plant your feet, and you're gonna move your leg forward, okay? The reason I say you need a wall is it's just going to give you a guide as to how far you're actually stretching, okay? So I'll put a little clip in uh, in a second of, you know, a close-up of, of that. But it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to move my yoga mat so you can see. So you're going to bring your foot till it's about, you know, a couple of inches away from the wall. And that's going to be your starting point. And then you're simply going to bend your knee towards the wall, okay? Stop just before you tap it. Come back to the starting position. Do that a couple of times. If you feel like that's too easy and you're not really getting anything from that, simply bring your foot slightly further away. You've got to keep that heel planted though. That's what's doing the work. Keeping the heel planted into the floor is what's doing the work for you. Again, you can move slightly further away if you want for your last couple of reps. And there we go. Then you're going to start with your other foot. Start back in the starting position. Squeeze towards the wall. Split second, back to your starting position. If you find that too easy, scoot your foot slightly further back. Couple of reps here. Keep that heel planted. I can't stress enough how important that is. If it's coming up even just a millimeter, you're not getting the benefit of this stretch. So, couple more reps here. And 
and we're done. Well done. All right, cool. So coming towards the end of the workout now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into a deep squat. So feet hip width apart or slightly wider, toes pointing out or, or straight forward, whatever is your preference. And you're going to come all the way down. I like to hold my hands out in front of me here. I'm not sure why I do that. It's just something I do. And ideally you're going to come into what we would call a deep squat. Okay, so below 90 degrees. Uh, so your, your backside is almost pressing against your heels there. And from here, just going to move very, very subtly left and right. Very, very subtle. Maybe even forwards and back to the starting position a tiny bit. Just ever so slightly. Just kind of moving our center of gravity left and right and forwards and backwards. And you'll feel the muscles in your feet and the ligaments in your ankle working to kind of keep you balanced. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so a few more seconds here. Your legs will be starting to burn if you're anything like me. You just gotta work through that. Couple more shifts left and right. We're almost there. And then back to your starting position. Once again, step your legs out, give them a shake. Then we're gonna go into an overhead press squat. So you're gonna imagine you have a weight, a barbell above your head as you come down into your squat. So from your starting position, bring your hands up as if you had a barbell overhead. And you're gonna come all the way down into your deep squat. A couple of seconds here, and then back up. We're gonna do that a few times. Try and keep that form all the way down. So keeping your shoulders up. Imagine if you did have a weight above your head. If you're coming forward, that weight's clearly going to drop, okay? You don't want that. You want to imagine that you're holding up a weight as you're coming up and down. Go as low as you can comfortably before you start to bend forward. Push it a tiny bit. Really, really push yourself to keep that center of gravity. And that's how your squat mobility will improve. And your squat form going forward will be better and better and better. Couple more. Last one. And back up. And once again, shake it off. Roll your shoulders. Stay loosey goosey. Okay. We have two more exercises to go. Quick rehydrate for me. All right. And these next two exercises, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like them, okay? But they're very, very good for you, and that's why we're doing them, okay? So the first one is called a Superman. As I'm sure you can imagine, you are lying down on your belly in a flying position with your legs out behind you and your arms out in front of you. And then you're simply gonna raise your arms and raise your legs just for a split second or two, and then back down to your starting position. Like so. Make sure you've got room to do this. Whether it be arms up at the side or what have you. Starting from here, you're gonna come up and then relax. And you're gonna do that a few times with a split second pause in between each rep. It's a lot more difficult than they look, these exercises. Two more reps to go. Last one. Well done. Okay. Now, I said we had one more exercise. And we do, which is why I said it. However, it's a little bit of a different one, okay? It's called, well, it's referred to quite commonly as angels and demons. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Depending on your current flexibility level, it's going to dictate how you're going to do this exercise. The true, pure form way to do them is with your arms off the floor at all times and your legs off the floor at all times much like we did there in our Superman position. Clearly that's gonna be very difficult to hold them in that position throughout the rep. So if you need to lower your legs and just keep your legs on the floor the whole time, that's absolutely fine. If you need to move your hands across the floor rather than bringing them up, that's absolutely fine as well. Do what works best for you. Do what is at your current level, okay? But we do wanna push ourselves. We do wanna try and improve in our flexibility, okay? But basically the way to do this exercise is make sure you've got some space out in front of you and you're gonna start with your arms right up top and you're going to raise your arms up, if you can, and then out into a Y position, and then round, and then back behind your back, and then back round again. Back to your starting position. That's one rep. By all means, take a little break there, and then do it again. Nice and slow and controlled. I have no idea where the name comes from, Angels and Demons. Sounds a bit uh, intense for me, but there you go. Nice and slow. That's three reps so far. Two 
Two more reps to go. Really push yourself. One more. Nice and controlled all the way around. And back, nice and controlled. And stop. Okay. Whew. Well done. Now, I have just realised while I was having a moment there to contemplate, I did miss something I wrote down. So we're going to go back and we're going to do it now because we don't like a half hour things. I could have just said that I saved it for last because it's named the world's greatest stretch. That would be a lie. So I genuinely forgot about it. What we're going to do is we're going to come back to our feet. And for the world's greatest stretch, which you might have seen before, it's, it's surprisingly simple given how complex it sounds, okay? You're going to take a big step forward as if you're doing a lunge, all right? Then you're going to come down, place your left forearm across your knee, whoops, and you're going to bring your right hand down to the floor. Okay, so far pretty simple. Then you're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna raise it as far up as you can and twist at your, at your waist and then you're gonna bring it back down through this gap here and round and you're gonna twist as far as you can. All right, and that's one rep. So back up, hand towards the sky, turn to face it and then back down through this little gap, twist again, all right? Two reps. And we'll call that three and we'll call that done. Back to your starting position and obviously you're going to swap legs. So big step, bring your right forearm down onto your knee this time, left hand down and once again, hand up to the ceiling and then back down through your gap, big stretch, it's one, we're going for three all together. So nice and slow, we're not rushing this last stretch. Last one, nice big stretch, back down and around, and there we are, okay. Woo. And now we really are done, I promise. Oh yeah. Well done, don't forget to grab a drink. So, this particular routine, obviously, I've mapped it out as a full, you know, that this is your only exercise for the day routine, all right? Now, you don't have to necessarily follow that, that train of thought. You could shorten this routine, just pick out your favorite bits, pick out, you know, four or five or six of those particular movements rather than the full dozen or whatever we've done um, and put those before the, the workout of the day. So, for example, if you're working on your deadlifts that day, you might do a few that are related to your, your spine. Or if you're working on your squats later in the day, you might do four or five of those exercises that are particularly good for your hips and your ankles. It's obviously very, very adaptable if you want to use it as a warm-up. If you wanted to do it as a standalone routine, then obviously that's what we've planned for. You could take a little bit longer each stretch. You could take a little break between each one and do some kind of extra mobility things that you know, I'm sure you've, you've been doing anyway. Um, so yeah, you can adapt this routine as you see fit, but um, it, it very much is up to you depending on what you want to get out of it. If you are lifting heavy on a regular basis, doing some mobility either every day or as a standalone routine is very, very highly recommended, okay? If you're going to be working out consistently and not doing mobility workout, uh, mobility um, exercises, excuse me, then what you're going to end up with is small compensations here and there. When you go into a training session and you've got a little niggle because you haven't fully recovered from the day before or the week before or whatever, um, you're going to slightly compensate and that's going to compound over time. So doing this kind of work can help just iron out those wrinkles um, and help get you make you uh, in the best shape you can be going into your next workout. Okay, so you get the most effective workout from whatever weights you're lifting or whatever cardio you're doing or whatever, okay? So hopefully you found that, um, you found that all right. Hopefully you got some value from that. Let me know if you did, let me know if you didn't, all right? Either way, give me a shout um, and obviously we can, we can make recommendations and we can change things as we go um, tailored for you. But uh, like I say, hopefully you found some value from this and we'll see you next time. Until then, take it easy.